first to start from the uh, just open questions. So we have, uh, well, first question for you, Jeff, um, from uh, Sanaz uh, Rizayan. I'm sorry if I'm just not pronouncing this correctly, but uh, what kinds of structural responses are influenced by this correlation parameter? Um, so we looked at, uh, I think two, I think we looked at peak floor velocities and uh, interstory drift ratios. Um, and saw that the results were similar to for both of those. May have been a third that didn't get make it to the paper, but um, I can't remember. I can check for you. Okay. So then we have another question from uh, Maha uh, Inoui. Uh, so for uh, for you, Jeff. Uh, so great presentation. Uh, since epsilon is based on uh, Gramosha prediction equations, there must be some uncertainty associated with the predicted correlations, especially near, near the fault, where recordings are sparse and Gramosha prediction equation may be poorly constrained. Did you think about how to account for that in the evaluation of uh, the simulated motions? Um, so I guess the un uncertainty of epsilon calculations, how to account for that? Um, no, um, yeah, I'm reading the question now. Yeah. So the, the epsilons are calculated from a full database. Um, so they're not just relying on the near fault ground motions. Um, and, and one of the things that we looked carefully at was the dependence of those on, um, just things like distance and magnitude and found that it was very weak. So, um, shouldn't be too much of a problem having sparse near fault recordings. Okay, so let's see, I'm trying, we're getting just quite a few questions. So, uh, I'm just trying to go through all of them. Okay. Another for you, <laughs> Jeff. So um, from uh, Lynn, uh, thanks very much for your nice presentation. May I know the distance from source to site and may I know the range of magnitude of those uh, simula simulation, realiza simulation realizations for both uh, within residuals and between residuals, are the results sensitive to some input parameters like source models or other parameter? Thanks much for answering in advance. Um. I think that's the question I, that's a similar to what I just answered for the, for the database um, of the empirical correlations, it's using the full range of, of magnitudes and distances. Did I get the question correctly? I guess so we can. They're going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just I'll try to slow down. Okay, just another yes. question we have here. Oh, this is for me from Celine. Um, so great presentation, thank you. Uh, did you explore the differences in the rate of acceptance of synthetic motions when you use only step two of your acceptance algorithm, only IM and response factor versus all four steps, including EDPS for the 40 story building? Well, uh, so um, we uh, didn't really just ex explicitly address this. Um, so, but the idea here is that as long as we uh, just use consistent uh, acceptance criteria for the uh, intensity measures, for the uh, building response proxies and for the uh, structural response, so then we should really just be able to uh, just draw like a correlation between what we uh, just observe. So uh, in other words, uh, uh, we would like to be able to, uh, at some point, stop our analysis at step three. So just after analyzing the uh, proxies that we think of our, 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 our interest for the uh, simulations and the intensity measures, and then just be able to just infer what would be just uh, how did these correlations, how, how these uh, properties would be reflected in the structural response. Uh, so we haven't really just explicitly just stopped our analysis and compared, but it's something that we we'll probably just, uh, uh, we can just do with it, some sort of like a just backward uh, just uh, process. Uh, I don't know if that answers uh, Salim your question. Okay, so, uh, well, we can move to, okay, another question from uh, Professor Polucci. Uh, great presentation, Floriana, very interesting. One question, um, I missed what uh, do the recorded and simulated ground motion have in common to be used as input motions 
for a structural analysis and to compare structural performance. Only magnitude and distance, a common spectral compatibility are record scaled for the comparison. Okay, this is a great question. So for the uh, just canonical domain, which is a very simple, this plain domain that we used as a first check of the, for the methodology. So we consider just three parameters. So the magnitude, the rupture distance, and the uh, just VS30. Uh, and we just consider the uh, just uh, uh, average values of uh, just these uh, parameters. However, just when we started like looking at uh, just realistic, a real domain as in the San Francisco Bay Area, we have actually just proposed a methodology for the uh, just validation uh, for the selection of the uh, just uh, um, real records, which is based on use of the uh, gram motion models and uh, considers four uh, just parameters at the same time. So the magnitude, the um, uh, rupture distance, but also the uh, um, uh, BS30 and uh, the uh, Z10. And so we uh, just in brief, uh, just we define uh, just a baseline case, which is based on the ground motion model, the four ground motion models, and the, uh, we account for the um, uh, epistemic uncertainties and additional uncertainties. Um, and then we um, uh, we see how it just we, can, we perturb the uh, just uh, the uh, uh, the ground motion models, the four models, and we see just how how we can just vary the parameters. So these four parameters that are just listed to uh, just being within the, this uh, acceptance criteria, and um, and based on that, then we select the population of real records we will use uh, uh, for the. Um, uh, uh, for the comparison with these immediate records. Uh, I'll be happy to share this uh, offline more uh, just details, but there is uh, just a methodology we have uh, just uh, recently worked on for, explicitly for the selection of the uh, consistent uh, real records. I hope this answers the question. So we have another question for you, Jeff, from uh, just RT, Arthur Rogers. Uh, do you plan to evaluate spectral correlations for more fully deterministic high frequency simulations? If so, what properties would, uh, would, would like these simulations to include? Uh, just magnitude, uh, 3D structures, site conditions? Yeah, that's uh, a good question from Artie. I think he's asking so that he can uh, know what simulations he's gonna have to run. <laughs> but um, yes, I do plan to do that. And I'm hopeful that the results would be um, better than what we saw for the for the, the simulations that are, you know, based on stochastic methods at higher frequencies. So that would be a really interesting thing to see. And, and for what would be helpful is um, having the, the quantity and variety in the simulations such that it's, it's, um, it, it's producing enough um, different realizations and of uh, uh, magnitudes and paths and site conditions. Um, so you can get the variability in all those things and, and partition the residuals. So that I think that will really improve from the last time we worked with your simulations already where we just had one source and one realization or maybe two. And um, so all the paths are the same and all the, the site effects are, are kind of repeated. Okay, so, uh, well, we have just uh, quite a few questions. So I would just uh, like to give the opportunity to uh, just both Carmine and uh, Ting to uh, respond uh, just live to a couple of questions. So um, uh, first question for, uh, from our Sam Kazlimi um, for um, uh, Ting Lin. Uh, so um, uh, for Professor Lin, thanks for your energetic presentation. We have uh, shown the collapse probability and fragility curves of buildings. Are these fragilities obtained from uh, conducting uh, IDA or cloud analysis, or you have used some uh, other approach? So Aline, if you can just briefly just uh, respond and such that everybody can just uh, hear your response. Yeah, yeah, thanks for your question. So what we use is hazard consistent ground motion selection with conditional spectra and essentially multiple strike analysis if we use the conventional method, which means that we would use USGS hazard curve with here recorded in, uh, NGA database motions. And then if we go into the direct analysis round where we use the hybrid shape, um, then we could basically use the hazard curve from cyber shape and the unscaled ground motions also from cyber shape. So that will be a direct analysis bypassing IM. And we did about uh, half a million analysis also per site and several sites. All right, thank you. And so one question for uh, Carmina. 
uh, I'm just going with the first one, and um, but these are just uh, can be accessed by just uh, all the attendees. Uh, so, uh, what are the physical reasons behind uh, CMS and GP uh, performs almost equally good in terms of uh, predicting uh, essay, whereas the source uh, characterization has different algorithms in two methods? Yeah, as I as I said in the in the box, it's a bit difficult to say because uh, maybe I didn't. I was not clear when I was presenting that we I was doing the same 50 realization that Jeff has used for those four events, but then because they were only on rock, uh, I had to select only a number of stations for the recordings for which that they were on rock, and so then at the end the results were average across the event. So it's a bit difficult to say, you know. Uh, and plus again, those are historic events for which you know they were the the kinematic model was well. well um, was well well established for for those events so it, it, again it they they perform fairly well all of them and quite consistently i guess because of all the optimization uh that that went in them before you know going in the SCAC problem platform um but again as i i think the warning that i put in the slide you know it's not i mean it was mainly for illustrative purposes of the the, the validation methodology rather than say i think there is a lot of work that now needs to be done through those results, we're really working together with the modelers, with the with the simulation modelers, to understand a bit more on some of those discrepancies. Uh, but overall, I think the results are very promising, which is good. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. So thank, thank you again to all the speakers for their great uh, presentations. So we are going to take a short break now, and we will uh, reconvene at uh, nine uh, twenty. <laughs>